Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to a new Will I Buy That? video. By the way, if you didn't know, this series is as always inspired by Samantha March. She started off doing these videos donkeys years ago, quite frankly. I apologise if you weren't aware of that. I had someone in my last Will I Be Buy It video accuse me of not crediting Samantha, but just so you know, I've been doing these videos now for like three years and I always credited Samantha at the beginning of the series, I add my Will I Buy It videos to Samantha's community playlist, Will I Buy It playlist, and I usually try to remember to credit her in the description box as well. But yeah, she does not need me to say that at the beginning of every single video. So if you were confused as to why I don't, you know, do a whole Samantha March tribute at the beginning of every video, she knows I love her. We all know that she was the creator of this. And I did say that in numerous videos, but it's, you know, we can't do that forever, okay? She gets it. We, we've definitely given her the credit. She she understands. She's, she's accepted it, okay? But if you were new here and you thought maybe that was my first Will I Buy It video and why wasn't I create, and why wasn't I giving Samantha credit, that's why I have done a thousand times and she's quite frankly sick of hearing from me. So yeah, we've ticked that box, I promise you. But the other people I always and must credit are the people whose brains I always steal this information from, who I get all of my hot makeup tea from. And a lot of the product photos that we see, the sneak peeks come from these Instagram accounts. They are amazing. And they are where I get all of my news and my makeup launch upcoming release so if I were you, I would follow them on Instagram because it just really helps to know what's coming. You can budget, you can plan accordingly and these are the people who break it first. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. That didn't rhyme. I don't know if I thought it was going to, but yeah, that's where we're at. So first up, we have Mothership 9, Utopian Dream. I briefly discussed this in some other video that I forget, but <laughs> she's so professional. I wonder why she doesn't have more subscribers. So this palette has been a little controversial. I'll say that, you know, once Pat herself revealed this palette, a lot of people were fuming, raging they were. Lots of people were irate about this palette. There was definitely a mood and a feeling that this palette was going to be a rainbow of colours and pastels and just an a carnival explosion along the lines of like the Circa Loco palette, what that was to Natasha Denona. People were expecting not necessarily Circa Loco's colour story, but that level of colour is what people were asking for, what they thought all of the clues and everything were pointing towards. So when the reveal happened, pe people felt a type of way about it. Because let's be honest, most, I would say, all, most if not all of the Mothership palettes are actually pretty wearable. Oh, they certainly have a lot of wearability in them for most people. Obviously what's wearable to you is not necessarily what's wearable to me because I am an absolute wimp when it comes to colour and bright makeup looks. I'm pretty basic, well, very, very basic when it comes to makeup and most things, but I digress. Lots of people who are just desperate for Pat's formula and a mothership, but they are far more adventurous and creative than me and they want the colour and they've just never really got the colour. They've got a splash or a hint, a green or a blue, but they want a whole palette. That's what the people want. So I can understand why, if that's what you're expecting. And then you saw this, which many people have said, this is essentially Divine Rose 3. I can totally understand and appreciate why you were disappointed. I don't know that I necessarily got rainbow pastel, mega colourful vibes from the sneak peeks, but obviously lots of people did. I think the thing about Pat's sneak peeks, there's definitely some colour in some of them. I'm just looking at them now, if you're wondering why I'm not looking at you, it's so rude. I'm just looking through the sneak peeks. And lots of them do have colour, but do you know what? They all run. All of these sneak peeks were pinky purpley themed, I would say. And I don't think, well, we obviously should not read into Pat McGrath's sneak peeks and her inspiration posts as being very literal. I think she's just saying these are the things that inspire her 
And these are the, the pictures or the videos or the, the themes that kind of inspired her when she was working on this palette. I don't think that, well, clearly it doesn't actually mean that those, all of those are the exact colors that we should expect to see in the palette. That That's obviously not what she meant, but you can understand people who've been waiting patiently for a, a mega colorful mothership were disappointed. I myself was thrilled because as I said, I'm although I was on board with the color, and I probably would have picked it up to have something different and give it a try and see what I can get out of a super colorful mothership. But as I said, I'm very, very basic. And these are my colors, pinks, purples. Oh, I could do these all day. And lots of people were sort of saying, oh, this is just divine rose one and two, like they had a baby. And I was like, and that was supposed to be a bad thing. But to me, I was like, I know it's like all my dreams have come true. I'm, that's like literally all I could possibly have asked for. Divine Rose 1 and 2 to have made a baby. Yes, please. That's how I feel about it. I think it's stunning. And I'm pretty confident that if the formula is what we know it will be with Pat, this is probably going to be my favourite ever mothership because it's just got the best things that I love out of Divine Rose 1, the best things that I love out of Divine Rose 2. And they had it, like they said, a love child and I flip and love it. And I'm absolutely gonna be picking this one up. Okay. Next up, this By Terry Hydra Powder Palette. This is an easy pass for me because I just don't use pressed powder, okay? Uh, so I definitely don't need four of them. I just don't, these types of pressed powder palettes or powder, yeah, I mean, they'd have to be pressed. You couldn't have a loose powder palette, could you? That would never work be a right mess. But these pressed powder type of palettes or like situations where there's more than one and it's powdery. I don't know what I'm going for anymore. Who am I? I don't understand them. I mean, well, no, I understand it if you're a professional working makeup artiste, because of course you're working on numerous skin tones. This is going to be great. You've got all of those four, or you buy both palettes, you've got eight shades of pressed powder to work on all different skin tones. But for me, I only have like one skin tone. Well, I have two, I have like my summer and my winter, I guess. But yeah, I mean, I, there was a kind of, when I was reading the description of this, it was like, oh, you know, it's supposed to be used, maybe a bit of bronzing, brightening, and then setting. But I'm just, I just don't do that. That's not really how I work with powder, that's not for me and these powders are quite mattifying as well which isn't generally the type of powder that I like to go for if I ever use a powder which most of the time I don't it's like a glowy powder a luminous powder not a mat not a mattifying that's like a four letter word in this house mattifying don't you dare so this is definitely not for me um it's hard because I haven't seen anyone use this but it seems as though there, there needed to be a third palette as well especially if you're kind of promoting this as something that's going to bronze and brighten. I don't think these two colors are gonna work or cover a, half of the people out there. There's gonna be a lot of people who neither of these palettes work for, whether you're fairer or deeper skin than the lighter or the deepest palette. So yeah, I think there needed to be more variety or if they were only gonna bring out two palettes, maybe a bigger difference between the two palettes, but we've yet to see it, or I've yet to see it be used. So maybe these powders are super sheer. I don't know, I hear good things about them. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see reviews, but it's not something that I personally need or would use. Next up, something different. And this is the fragrance, the first fragrance from Fenty. So from Rihanna, Bridgetown is the name of the perfume. I mean, I really like the packaging, to be honest. And I know, you know, Rihanna has this reputation as being like the best smelling celebrity out there. I do own Rihanna's perfume, um, which is from Killian, which is supposed to be the perfume that make, like everybody thinks Rihanna smells like she's from heaven, an angel. And it's gorgeous, I do enjoy it, I love it, I love love. But, and so I think a lot of people were expecting this fragrance to be like a dupe for that given that that's kind of what she's known for and I absolutely flipping love that it is not it's nothing like it at all really it does have I guess a similar vibe as in it appears to be a very typically feminine lot of rose sounds like it's going to be quite sweet and also got that musky 
scent in there, the musky tones in there. So in some ways, I guess it, it sits in a similar ballpark, but she absolutely did not dupe it or try to make a fragrance that smells like that. And I really like that because I think that would be, that would kind of cheapen her brand for me if she's just gonna, you know, release like a copycat celebrity fragrance. I think a lot of the time when celebrities bring out fragrances, they do dupe their very expensive fragrance and make one that smells exactly like someone else's perfume. And I feel like that would have been disappointing for me. I love that she brought out her own fragrance that she has obviously created herself and didn't just try to copy one that she likes from somebody else. I think it sounds beautiful, very like summer, sexy, but it's not my type of fragrance. I typically only buy niche fragrances these days because that's just what I love and really, really enjoy. But this, these notes just aren't typically notes that I enjoy. So I know it's an easy pass for me. I'm sure it'll be gorgeous. I'm sure she's done a great job as she does with literally everything she does, but it's just not, the notes are not the type of notes I'm drawn to. So it's an easy pass. Next up, this, next up, this Charlotte Tilbury Super Nudes collection. <sighs> and be still my beating heart because hello. I mean, it's Charlotte Tilbury and it's a face palette. It's two of my favorite things in life, okay? Of course I'm picking all of this up. I will definitely pick up the face palette and all of the lip colors as soon as I can, presumably, presuming I can get them and do a full review. I'm also interested, actually, the double-ended liner. Perfect, I love one of those. I love a double-ended liner that's a black with a nude because that's just everything you need. Got your waterline, your tight lining in one. Love that. Um, she has great liners. Charlotte Tilbury, I like both her lip liners and her eyeliners. The eyeshadow palette it is a repromote, I think. That palette was available previously. I don't need that. I feel like her Desert Haze palette does everything that that palette does, and I enjoy it and I already own that. But the face palette, I'm wheezing. I can't wait to give it a try. And the lip colours all look stunning, and you know how I feel about Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks absolute dreams and these shades look stunning glorious love it obsessed yes yes give me more i am disappointed there wasn't a second face palette especially as previously we've she's always given us two a lighter and a deeper and this is the first time that i remember her releasing a face palette just in one shade I did see she did like a master class with the palette and it was used on all different skin tones including deeper skin tones and it looked gorgeous and it's just different ways of depending on if you're fair I did see my friend Tavia over on Instagram she says it's too deep for her because she has fair skin so maybe you'll have to use it differently depending if you're fair or medium or tanned or deeper skin we're all going to probably use it differently but yeah it would have been great to have seen there be two palettes because we don't want to go backwards we want to go if anything there should have been three because we've done two so we should have done three and one feels like a step back and I wish there were more because it, obviously the more there are the more people it's going to work for you know the Natasha Denona mini Zenon eyeshadow palette really on the fence with this one wasn't where like I can't get it for review purposes it, as usual it launches like two weeks later here than anywhere else, which infuriates me to the core. Hmm. But this just isn't really a color story that I use very often. My five pan palette that you guys lost your mind over and as did I in my monthly favorites, the five pan from Natasha Nona that is kind of, it's not quite the same color story, it, but it does this same sort of job, that super smoky, cool toned, I, but that one, my palette runs more blue and this runs more like classic gray black. Whereas the one that I've been loving is like gray blue. If that makes any sense. I prefer that color story to this one. I did see Morgan Turner's review of this though. And oh my, I mean, that she can make anything look glorious and stunning, but that did actually nearly change my mind. I'm kind of on the fence with it. It's got mixed reviews. Some people love it. Some people are just like, you know, it's okay. And the formula isn't Natasha's best. It's obviously a very sim simple, not simple, but it's it's does one job is what I'm saying. It's what does one thing. It's not the most versatile. You can literally get what you can do one thing. And that's a super deep, rich, 
all glam, smoky eye, right? That's kind of what you're gonna get out of this palette and not really a lot else. So yeah, I just don't think I need it, to be honest. I feel like if I want to do that type of look, I've got my Natasha Denona five pan already to do that with. I've also got the Glam palette for Natasha that's much more versatile. And even the ABH Sultry palette, you know, has these shades in there. So I just, yeah, I don't feel like I need it, is what I'm saying. If, if I could have got it here instantly and done a review, I would have loved to, but it's gonna be weeks until I can get it. And by that time, we'll have all moved on to the next 28 eyeshadows palettes that came out in the meantime. Next up, these Hermes Autumn slash Winter new lip shades. I've yet to buy a lipstick from Hermes. I've just never really felt the need. None of them have ever really grabbed me, pulled at my heartstrings, pushed me over the ledge into purchase town. It's not, it's not happened yet. And there have been some gorgeous shades. They've got some beautiful oranges and you know how I feel about oranges. So it's surprising really that I've just never, I don't love the packaging. I know that's probably controversial because I think lots of people do really love the packaging, but I don't really, I don't love really colorful packaging. I tend to like more muted, you know, shiny, fine, great, glittery, sure, for sure. But really bright colors doesn't really, it doesn't appeal to me as much. I don't know if that's why, or they're just really expensive and seem pretty average. I don't know why I haven't purchased any, but these are not gonna be the ones that push me over, let me tell you. They just look very dull to me. Like, there's none of these shades that make me go, oh yes, oh, I haven't got a shade like that. Oh yes, that's my, I'm just uh, very the opposite of excited. I'm nonplussed, that's what I feel about these. And I do not want to pay 60 pounds to be nonplussed. Do you? That was easy. The entire Kylie 24K birthday collection. Now, Ky now Kylie Cosmetics is now available in the United Kingdom. We can get it in a couple of places. I think it's Selfridges and Harrods, or maybe Harvey Nichols, I forget. One of the H department stores, beginning with an H, it'll be one of those, and Selfridges. So that's great for people who love the brand and want to have that availability in the UK without paying crazy shipping and taxes. So that's great. This, I don't, this whole collection doesn't appeal to me at all. It's just, um, fine, it's fine. I think Kylie's quality is, from what I hear, decent, but a lot of people claim that it's like Colourpop, but three or four times the price so I don't know I don't know about the facts on that one we don't have Colourpop here in the UK so I don't know I don't know what the the tea is on that but this all just looks like a hundred other palettes that aren't really my cup of tea don't really appeal to me I think this whole collection is just very skippable and yeah if I wanted to celebrate someone's birthday, it'd be my own, or at least one of my children, or my husband, or someone I know, personally. I don't necessarily celebrate celebrities' birthdays. I didn't know that was a thing. But I'm not gonna buy her a present by shopping all of her makeup. That's outrageous. She can buy her own present. Next up, the YSL, I mean, are we saying new? Is this new? YSL new, or is it any, I don't know. Are we saying, what are we saying? How are we saying this? I don't know, but this this is the whole thing, a whole collection right up in her. Now, I have mixed feelings on this one. I don't really know how to feel. I need some reviews. It's not available here yet, but apparently is available in the US. And I saw my friend Tara Lynn has picked it up and she also does great reviews. So that will be, I'm sure, very, very helpful and will help me decide. I was, of course, excited to try the skin tint because YSL has one of my absolute favorite skin tints. And I feel, I'm just trying to memorize foundations. Yeah, yeah, foundations. Yeah, they do, they do, they do, you know. They have great foundations. So I'm actually excited to try this one. I don't know anything about it because actually the packaging gives nothing away and neither does any of the information that I've seen, but it said the word dewy in it. So I was instantly suckered in. It claims to give 24 hour hydration, 20 shades, which for a skin tint is pretty decent, light to medium coverage. So yeah, I'm intrigued. I can't wait to see reviews. This is definitely a wait for review for me because I have no other option because it's not available here. So I may as well have an informed decision. But yeah, I mean, the packaging is uh, not my favorite. It's very plain and boring. 
But yeah, other than that, I am intrigued to see. There are also less exciting products in this same range, for me at least. There's a priming moisturiser, not really interested in that. There's a mattifier again, I've all, no, definitely that won't be coming home with me. Then we've got a tone corrector and complexion booster. So these come in different shades, these correcting shades, you know, the green for redness, gold, rosy to brighten or improve dull skin, their typical color correcting shades. That's not something I typically use either, really. I, well, I don't, I've never, I don't think I've ever used, well, no, actually back in the day, do you remember that green, what was that green stuff we used to put all over our whole faces? I, I forget, but yeah, I have done, I have definitely done that, but when I was like 15, I haven't done since. And then there's a face, a face spray, a facial spray. It doesn't seem to be a setting mist, more of like a skincare type face spray, which I'm, I don't know, I mean, I could take it or leave it. So for me, the most exciting bit of that collection is absolutely the skin tint. If it was available here, I would have tried it already, but <sighs> woe is me. Next up, this Huda Beauty waterproof liner. Now, I don't use a lot of liquid liner, but when I do, I use the KVD Beauty one because it's amazing, the Trooper liner, it's amazing. I have also tried the Fenty, which I loved at first, but it just seemed to kind of dry out a bit quickly and the tip of it just wasn't as crisp as the KVD. But I do like to have one in stock because on occasion, I do like to whack a wing on, I do. It's been said about me. I do like to occasionally just go for it with a, with a liner. And that is the exact type of liner that I like to use. If I'm going for a winged liner, that's the type of wing liner I'm going for. It looks black as black can be. We know Huda is very good at these type of products, mascaras. I think she does not necessarily basics, but staples incredibly well. I think eyeshadows, they could be better or they're a bit maybe hit and miss. Same thing with like, base products but I think you know the these sort of staple products mascaras lipsticks liners lip liners as well uh, like she nails it every time and I think she also ha always has a focus on like full glam other than her glowy range but she also has a focus on things being black as black and bulletproof so I feel like she'll have done this very well I'm sure it will be very long wearing and bulletproof, waterproof, everything that she claims. So yeah, I think when I run out, I'm gonna pick this one up. I'm not in a rush. I certainly can wait until I've run out of my current liner before I pick this one up. Um, but yeah, I am excited to try it at some stage. And last and pretty much least, the Beauty Blender Bounce Blush. I, I mean, you put, my face has already given it away how I feel about this, not good. I don't feel great about it. I'm, as you know, not a fan of anything with the word cream in it. And these just look, I mean, this is called a liquid whip cream blush. All of those words just make me instantly want to run for my life. The shade, is that all the shades? I'm seeing four shades, is that all of them? And they all, three of them look pretty much the same, just in varying different depths. And then they've whacked in a, a peach one there. I don't like the packaging, I hate it frankly. And honestly, there's an, I haven't purchased anything from Beauty Blender yet, other than literally the Beauty Blender. I feel as though they had their thing that they were excellent at, and we probably should have left it there. The sponges are phenomenal. I love them. I can't live without an actual Beauty Blender. But all these things shaped like them, I don't think any of them have done great. I mean, we won't even talk about their foundation and that whole shade range shebang. And since, I've just... There's never really been anything that's kind of turned it around for me. I'm just always look at the brand and like, you can definitely do better than that. Or go back to the sponges because those were doing fabulous, okay? They didn't need to go down this route. And if they were going to, I feel like we could have, we could have done better and more than this. But yeah, these don't appeal to me. I don't have a lot of trust and faith in the quality at that brand because I just don't know of anything that's ever been great, is what I'm saying. So I'm sorry, I want to, do I? I was gonna say I really want to like them and like some, but I don't know if I do, I, that might be a lie. I don't know, I just have, I have low expectations and I'm waiting for them to rise, 
rise my expectations. I don't want to have low expectations. I'm a nice person, okay? I want to have good expectations, but you're gonna have to try harder to, to get me there, okay? I need more than this, all right? So there you have it. Those are all of the new and upcoming releases that I either have my eye on or I definitely don't. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on these new releases, what you are excited for, if anything, and what you are absolutely not excited about in the comment section down below. Let's thrash it out down there. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'd love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye-bye-bye-bye.